cheetahs never prosper? Oh yeah, Zazu? Well, I beg to differ. If you're tired of those pesky xenomorphs and their acidic innards, it's nothing a cheat code for unlimited ammo with no reloads can't solve. Someone should have told these guys it's not good manners to hit a lady. But drop in a cheat code for unlimited magic powers with no wait time, and these fellas will learn their manners faster than you can say Dragon Age 2. It's all thanks to the power of Artemis for the PlayStation 3, and I'm about to show you how to get the cheats you want for the games you love to play. On your custom firmware or PS3 hen modded PlayStation 3 system, you'll need to install the Artemis package file. I have it linked for you in the description below from Brewology.com. Scroll down to the link for the latest version of Artemis and click on it. Inside this section, scroll down to the download link and click the download link to get the latest package file. From your computer, open up your downloads folder to access the package file. Insert a USB drive formatted in FAT32 format into your computer. Then you can simply drag and drop the package file directly onto the root of your USB storage. Now you can close out any instances of File Explorer in Windows. Remove the USB drive from your computer, insert it into the rightmost USB port on your PlayStation 3, and power on your system. If you're using a PlayStation 3 Slim or PlayStation 3 Super Slim that requires PS3 HEN, go ahead and activate it now. Okay, stop the music. I really want to emphasize this point. If you don't follow this step and you're using Evil NAT custom firmware, this process isn't going to work. Use the D-pad on the PS3 controller to scroll over to the Network tab on the Cross Media Bar. Select Custom Firmware Tools with the X button. From here, use the D-pad to scroll down three times until you get to Cobra Tools and select it with the X button. In this submenu, use the D-pad to scroll all the way down to the bottom to the listing for Toggle Cobra. If you haven't already enabled Cobra on your system, press the X button now. You'll see a message pop up in the top right corner of the screen indicating whether Cobra is enabled or disabled. Your system will reboot and you'll be ready to move forward. Cue the music, maestro. With the FAT32 formatted USB drive in the rightmost port on your PlayStation 3, navigate to the Package Manager and select it with the X button. Navigate to Install Package Files in the submenu and select it with the X button. Scroll down to Standard for your external storage, select it with X. You'll see the package file for Artemis listed here. Select it with the X button to install it to your PlayStation 3. Once the installation is complete, press the circle button to go back to the cross media bar. Hey, you know how music has a rhythm to it? So does using Artemis. Before you launch Artemis, I'd recommend loading your copy of your game. In this example, I've already pre-dumped three game discs directly to the PlayStation 3 internal hard drive. I'm loading the first virtual disc here, which is going to be Aliens Colonial Marines. If you've loaded the game correctly, you'll see the game staged and ready to go in the Games tab on your cross media bar, just like this. With your PlayStation 3 connected to either wired or wireless internet, go ahead and launch Artemis for the first time. On the initial launch of Artemis, it's going to extract some files to your hard drive. These are the files that are necessary for it to find cheats for your games. Once the process is complete, select OK with the X button to continue. This is the Artemis main menu. The music you're hearing is the actual music from the main menu of Artemis. If you like chill menu music, this is for you. But if looping menu music isn't your jam, let me show you how to turn it off. Use the D-pad to move the highlight over to Options and select Options with the X button. The very first listing in this menu is background music. If you don't want it on, just press X. Press Circle and it'll take you back to the Artemis main menu. Let's take a look at what cheats are available for the Aliens Colonial Marines game. Use the D-pad to slide over to Cheats and select it with the X button. Artemis will take a moment to go through the list of cheat files and ultimately provide you with the cheat files for every single game that it has in its database. To fix that and only look at the games that you have on your system, just press the triangle button. As I only currently have three games dumped directly to the hard drive, these are the three games that are represented. The first piece of information is the title itself. Sometimes you'll also see a version number or range of version numbers listed next to the title. To the right of the title, you'll find disk ID information, including the region information of the game cheats that are available. In this case, BLES indicates it's a Blu-ray disc cheat and that it's for the European version of the game. For the best success, you'll want to match these cheats and their regions with the region of the disc or game download that you intend to use. But in this example, I was able to dump the US version of Aliens Colonial Marines and then use the European version of the cheats. So don't necessarily let it dissuade you from trying just because the region codes don't match up. 
And finally, you'll see version number information for each of the games. This tells you which version of the game the cheats are intended to work with. Usually, this version is already updated if you've done the online updates for the game when you installed them. Let's go ahead and load the cheats that are available for Aliens Colonial Marines. In whatever game you look for cheats for, you're likely to see a listing that says AOB next to it. That just means array of bytes. While that information doesn't directly impact your choice of cheats, my research shows that some Artemis users have reported that cheats that have an AOB header have a greater success rate. Highlight the cheat that you want to use and select it with the X button. You'll see a message appear next to it that says once. That means the cheat will be activated one time, and each time you want to reactivate it, you'll have to go back into Artemis to activate it. Press the square button, and the message will change to constant. This means the cheat will be injected by Artemis into your game each time you launch it. With infinite ammo and no reloads in tow, press the start button to lock your changes in. Use the D-pad to scroll the highlight over to start game and select start game with the X button. This will take you back to the cross media bar. Now it's time to see if this code is worth all of the bothered spies that got whacked for us to get it. Go ahead and launch your game. Within a few moments of your game starting, you should see a pop-up notification from Artemis in the top right corner. The notification will say start to attach. You see, Artemis actually injects itself live into the game rather than patching or hacking the game before it's launched. Here's the deal. The longer you can wait to start the inject process from Artemis, the more likely you are to have success with it. In other words, try not to inject Artemis while things like cutscenes are playing. Wait until you are actually in the live action of the game and you are in control of your character. That's the point that you want to inject Artemis. Here's what I mean. Take a look in the bottom right corner and you'll see that the ammo count is going down as I fire the pulse rifle. To inject Artemis, press the PlayStation button on your controller. Wait for everything to load on the cross media bar up to the back to game message in the bottom right corner. Now press and hold the start button for about one second. You should see a pop-up notification from Artemis in the top right corner. It should say attached and wrote. Once you receive this notification, press the PlayStation button to go back to your game and test out the cheat to see if it worked. And sure enough, look at that. Infinite ammo and no reloads. This makes the challenge of being a colonial marine a little bit easier. But not everything that glitters in Artemis is gold. I tried to use some cheat codes for Batman Arkham City to get invincibility, power-ups for combos, and no hits. I got the expected behavior of the notification at the top right corner that Artemis had loaded and that it was ready to attach. However, it made no difference at which point during the game loading process I tried to attach Artemis. The result was the same. It locked up each time. Sometimes when Artemis was attached, sometimes immediately after Artemis was attached and I returned to gameplay, and even attempts to inject Artemis earlier in the process just resulted in lockup screens. Well, except for the little bat spinning in the bottom right corner anyway. Just realize that using Artemis can be a little bit of a process of trial and error. Remember that lesson in good manners from Dragon Age 2 from the beginning of this video? Here's that infinite magic and no wait code. And just like with the two previous games, you get the message in the right corner notifying you to press start to attach. Get into the game action, then press the PlayStation button on the controller. Just like before, once you see the back to game message in the bottom right corner, press and hold start. You'll see a pop-up message in the top right corner that Artemis has been attached and wrote. In this case, you'll actually see it pop up several times as that one cheat influences several different variables within the game. Press the PS button on your controller to go back, and your action RPG powers have leveled up. Oh yeah, about that elephant in the room. Can you use Artemis to cheat in online play? Well, yes, but it's not covered here. See, cheating against the PS3 in your own home is one thing, but cheating against a human being online? Well, as C-3PO would say, That just wouldn't be proper. Well said, Protocol Droid. This is a lot of fun, but there's one more thing that you really don't want to ignore in order to get the most value out of this. In this video here, I'll not only show you what it is, but also everything it takes step-by-step step, to build your own incredible PlayStation 3 library.